time on building the X-Set, I'm going to be installing the oil pump, baffle, and oil pan, as well as rear and front main seats. So basically in this video, I'm going to go over the install installation of the oil pump, which goes over the front and also includes the front main seal over the crankshaft. I'm also going to be installing the rear main seal on the rear of the crank. Then I will be putting in the uh, oil galley plugs here first, at least this front one in here because it is very close to the, to the oil pump. And then um, putting in the baffle, pickup tube, and oil pan. So let's get to it. First things first, I'm going to be using some Indian head sealant for installation of the front oil galley plug. Basically the same same exact installation as the freeze plugs, or same method. I've got some Indian head sealant here to coat the surface width of the oil galley plug. Then I'm going to set that aside and let that dry, or become tacky, I should say. And then also putting a little bit of it in the hole here. That brush is too big to get any in that hole, so I'm going to use my finger. And this stuff's pretty sticky, nasty stuff, so you definitely uh, want to get it on your hands as least as possible. So now I'm going to wait for that to tack up a little bit, and then it'll be time to come back. And uh, the oil galley fitting is press fit so it will need to be knocked in with a hammer. Okay, now this is tacked up. Now it is time to install the oil galley plug here. That went in much easier than the uh, freeze plugs did. Now I'll take a little brake clean just to clean off the residue from that plug. And that one is sealed up. I'm not going to put the rear one in until later because uh, it's being blocked by the uh, mount for the engine stand. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but on the uh, far side of the table here I have, this is part of it, but the uh, OEM Mazda engine gasket kit, basically all the oil seals for the motor. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be using those during installation. This is, I went to end up, my old pump was working fine, but I figured I'm going this far, I don't want to pull the motor right away again, so I went and purchased a new uh, Melling 191 oil pump uh, for the Mazda uh, Miata. And uh, the seal, the front main seal that comes with it, I was going to pop out and replace with the Mazda OEM seal. However, when I looked closely, they are the exact same seal. So they already use the OEM style seal in this pump. Now, since this pump can be used on multiple cars, there is um, one issue. There's one plug you have to put in, and luckily Melling supplied this. There's basically a plug that goes, you know, it would sit like this in the engine. And some models, I think it's like a, a protege or something like that, this seal is the dip, dipstick tube um, hole. So you need to put, excuse me, this hole is the dipstick tube hole. This plug needs to go into that hole. Um, otherwise, you're going to have a lot of oil going places you don't want it to go. So uh, first things, much like the other, putting the Indian head shellac around this and then pressing it into there to seal that hole up. One little thing real quick before installing your oil pump. Um, there's a couple gaskets, at least in the melling, melling kit, that are included. Uh, one is the gasket that's uh, your front main seal that is already in there. The other is this little o-ring around here. Then also there is this uh, gasket here, which I'm not sure is in the OEM kit or not. I Actually, funny enough, I don't see it in the OEM kit. That's rather odd because this is a pretty important gasket. This basically mounts here. This is where your pickup tube, um, this gasket for your pickup tube, this will help you basically retain your oil pressure. If you don't have this, you you could suffer um, losing oil pressure as uh, there'd be an open spot for air to get into the system. So uh, 
Yeah, I think that's kind of funny that the OEM Mazda does not include that filter. But anyways, so keep these handy. Be sure to put in these oil oil O-ring gaskets and these couple other gaskets before you get started. Make sure everything's good. Everything, all these mating surfaces here are nice and clean because basically there's going to be a beat of black RTV put all around all the bolt holes and the exterior of the oil pump. In here too before um, installing your oil pump, just make sure to blow off um, all the mating surfaces here where the oil pump will be attached as well as the crankshaft. Be sure to clean that very well um, as, the, as the, rear, the front main seal will be going over this crankshaft. So now I have test fit the pump and uh, everything seems pretty good. The, the one odd thing is the uh, surface here is machined and after uh, looking online a couple guys have said theirs was too and with RTV they have had no leaks so cross my fingers hopefully that's okay I guess I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna find out if it is or it isn't. So now I'm using ultra black permatex RTV silicone to basically silicone the pump to the block. So now for the installation onto the block, I um, went ahead and applied some uh, assembly lube, sorry, some assembly lube to the crankshaft area here, basically just to help feed the seal onto the crankshaft as it's a fairly tight fit. So um, here's my RTV silicone on the outside here and now it's time to get the pump. Okay, so now the Ultra Black RTV, one thing about it and that I've noticed, and it makes sense, is you do not want to, and a few of Permatex's uh, RTVs are like this, you do not want to torque it down initially. You just want to do finger tight until some of the gasket material pushes out. Then after an hour after the silicone is starting to harden, then you torque down. And what that does, it basically allows the silicone to dry to a point, or skin over, I guess is probably more of an appropriate term. And then when you're compressing the two surfaces together, then um, it's already like a rubber seal there that is getting compressed. So all the RTV is not just squirting out from the torque. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the bolts in, get this tightened down, let it sit for an hour, and then actually torque it to the block. My rear main seal installed in the bracket here, uh, nice and flushed out with the lip of the bracket. You want that installed very straight. Uh, basically, this piece here installs over the rear crank pulley like so. I will need to put RTV all along this mating surface here, um, basically from oil pan down underneath the pulley and back up to the other side of the oil pan. Okay, I have a generous and probably too generous bead of RTV sealant there and ready to install the seal. Okay, once again here, I'm going to use the same method. I'm going to be installing the four bolts basically to hand tight. And in an hour, I'm going to be coming back and torquing the bolts down. 
Okay, so now that my oil pump and rear main seal and brackets have been installed, um, you can see I now have these curved areas around the crankshaft. In those areas go these gaskets, like so. And, probably can't see with the camera, but like so. Now these need to be sealed down with black RTV sealant. So I'm going to go ahead and do that step next. Okay, now that I have some black RTV laid down, this thinner seal here goes on the rear main seal side and this thicker seal here goes on the oil pump. You can see each one of them has a notch in the rubber and that coincides with the notch in the machined surface you'll be putting it on. Squish that down in there. Okay. And then to the front seal. Okay. Now that that is down, uh, next step is to install the uh, windage tray and the oil pickup. With the windage tray, one thing I want to do is I want to preset it on there just to check the alignment that everything is going to be good. Nothing's hitting underneath on the bottom, anything like that. Everything fills very, uh, very good clearances. So what I'm going to do next is apply a bead of RTV from this point all the way to this point underneath, as well as on this side, the same thing. As RTV needs to be sealed here and sealed here before placing in the windage tray. Then there also needs to be a bead on top. However, when we do the oil pan, as its uh, gasket is RTV, we'll be applying a bead around the lip of the oil pan and then um, installing it on top. Okay, now I am setting the baffle down into the RTV. I'm just gonna kinda go through here and make sure it is squirting out all the ends that I have plenty of RTV underneath there. If I see any spots where I don't think I have enough, I will go ahead and apply some more, but it looks like I have Plenty there. Okay, so now that that is set in place, the next step basically is we are going through and going to install our um, siphon tube for the uh, oil pump. Okay, so for installing the siphon, once again, make sure that you have your seal. Place that in first. Okay, then drop that down. And I am going to put just a little bit of uh, blue Loctite on these clamping bolts here. So I just want to make sure, because they're very low torque, I just want to make sure that they will uh, stay in and not release in time. Basically, just got to insert that next bolt, and then there is a nut uh, that clamps the hose onto the top of the valve. Setting on these bolts is eight foot pounds. All right, all installed. Um, now, basically, time to lube up the oil pan, and I will be putting um, RTV all around the oil pan before. Uh, inserting it onto the block.
Okay, so now I'm going to be applying the oil pan to the block. So good so far. Now time to tighten all the bolts. Two long bolts go in the rear here. And the rest thread in along the rest of the holes. Okay, just getting the last couple oil pan bolts snugged up here. I'm basically just uh, getting them snug enough so that I can see a little bit of RTV squish out. I'm not torquing them down now, as the uh, Permatex, wants it loose and let the silicone set up some before doing a final torque. So I'm basically just uh, getting it, you know, somewhat hand tight with a socket here just to make sure there's no no gaps, and everything has equal pressure, or as equal as I can guess it to be. Then we will let that dry for an hour, and then we will torque down to our final torque spec. Okay, so last step is torquing all the oil pan bolts down to uh, 95 inch pounds of torque. There are 18 bolts, so make sure you count as you go as you're torquing down. So um, basically, I'm going to start in the center bolts and then uh, work out in a crisscross pattern for torquing everything down. We have a point now where the uh, bottom end of the motor is complete. Um, everything's done minus the you know accessories on the outside such as you know the uh, uh, dipstick tube and uh, water pumps and things like that. So other than that, basically complete with this side. Next time we're going to start dismantling the head.